for today, we're going to look at reflection. Now, reflection, think of when you look at yourself in the mirror. All right, let me, let's say that I had the mirror. Let's, let's say I had a mirror line over here. And let's say on one side of the mirror, I have the letter R. Now we know how the letter R looks like. On the other side of the mirror, my letter R looks like this. Now, this is in English, when we speak, we call that reflection. Well, the same thing in math, we're going to call that reflection. Reflection, what it is, is that it seems like you go from one side of the mirror to the other side. I look if you look at yourself in your in a mirror, it seems like you are also on the other side, right? Like like your room expand, like it gets bigger, and you are on the other side. Interesting part of dilate of reflection, interesting part of reflection is that the distances remain the same. So if you look at yourself in the mirror and you're pretty close to the mirror, like your your distance is not that big, you're close to the mirror, it seems like you're close on the other side. But now if you're you're far away from your mirror, it looks like you're also far away on the other side. Distances remain the same. So a couple of things we're going to do. There are special cases, and we're going to look at some special cases. There's four of them. We can reflect across the x-axis, across the y-axis, across the y equals x line, and across the y equals negative x line. Right, we're going to reflect across those. Now, those uh, lines that I gave you, the x-axis, the y-axis, the y equals x, or the y equals negative x, we're going to call that the mirror line. When we reflect across the x-axis, look at my instructions here. It says x, y becomes x, negative y. So all we do, we change the sign on the y value. So I'm not saying you make it negative. I'm saying you change the sign. If the y was positive to begin with, but then yeah, you make it negative. But if y was negative to begin with, then you switch it to positive. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to change the sign on the y value. When I go reflect, when I reflect across the y axis, I see my instructions here it says x, y become negative x, y. So I'm going to switch the value on the x. When I reflect across the y equals x line, if I look at this instruction, it says x, y become y, x. So x and y, they just switch places. Those two numbers switch. I'm not going to switch signs. They're just going to switch places. x, y become y, x. And lastly, reflection across the y equals negative x line, x, y becomes negative y, negative x. Now, if this looks like mum, it sounds like mumbo jumbo, we're going to take a couple, we're going to take a look at a couple examples, and that should make a little more sense then. Now, I'm not going to co be coming back to this image a lot, right? You guys have it on your notes. So when I say from now on, I'm going to say according to the formula on our notes, this is what I'm referring to, okay? These are special cases. We're going to be dealing with cases that are not special. Now, when they're, the cases are not special, we have to have the graph, and I'm just going to count the distance. Remember I said that on reflection, distances remained the same. If you're close to the mirror on one side, you're close to the mirror on the other side. If you're far from the mirror on one side, then you're going to be far on the other side as well. Except I want to make more sense when I, when I explain here. So let's take a look at our reflection. Let's take a look at number 44. I'm going to graph the image of the figure using the transformation given. Now, this is not a special case. I know you guys might be looking at, well, there's the thing that says reflection across y equals negative x. And then here I have reflection across y equals negative 1. Well, they're different, right? x is not 1, so it is not the same. Now, this is not a special case, so I'm going to count the distance. So I got to think, what's the line y equals negative 1? So let me think of my mirror line. I know the x-axis. So let me take a look at the x-axis. I know their name for the x-axis is the line y equals 0. Notice I switched the, the letter from x to y. So I know the x-axis. 
another name for the x-axis is the line y equals zero. The reason why we'll call it y equals zero because any point on that line, the y value is zero. So that's why we call it y equals zero. So the line y equals negative one should look like the y, like the x-axis, but because it's negative one, I'm gonna have it one below. So this red, this is my line y equals negative one. If it was a positive number, let's say y equals three, y equals five, y equals two, right? Y equals a positive value. My line should be above the x-axis. But now this one, because it's y equals a negative number, it is below the x-axis, right? You guys learn how to graph this last year in algebra one. Okay, so I have the mirror line. Now, what I'm going to do to reflect my triangle here, to be able to reflect this, I'm just gonna count the distance to the mirror line. So I'm gonna count each of my vertices, so each of my corners, I'm gonna count the distance to the mirror line and the distance should remain the same on the other side. What I mean with that is, let's take a look at the point F. Count the spaces from F to the mirror line. So it should be what? One, two, three spaces. So now count three spaces on the other side. So I should get that my point F prime, it's right here. Remember I said when we don't have a special case, right? The formulas on our notes on question number 35, those are for special cases only. When we don't have a special case, I have to count the distance. Okay, now let's take a look at point H. Count the distance from point H to the mirror line. So I'm gonna count, let's see, there's one, two, three spaces. So count three spaces on the other side, and that should give me the point H prime. Now let me take a look at my point G. Okay, one, two, three, four spaces. So count four spaces on the other side, and that's gonna give me the point G prime. I connect my points there. Now notice how the, the triangle looks like it flipped. Same thing happens on mirrors. Remember I, I was mentioning the letter R. Remember how I said that it flipped, okay? So that's, that's not that bad. Let's take a look at question number 45. I'm gonna reflect across the line x equals negative one. Okay, so I'm gonna be looking at the y-axis, right? When x equals a number, I look at the y-axis because the y-axis, another name that the y-axis has is the line x equals zero. So if x equals something, like in this case, x equals a negative one, my line should look like the y-axis. So it should be going up and down. If x equals a positive number, my line should be to the right of the y-axis. If x equals a negative number, my line should be to the left of the y-axis. So in this case, my line is x equals negative one. It's gonna be one space to the left. So this line is my mirror line. The mirror line is very, very important. Okay, so now let me count the distance because this is not a special case. Let me count the distance. So from each of my points to the mirror line. So I'm looking at my point F. Count the distance from point F to the mirror line. It's one, two spaces. So I'm gonna count two spaces on the other side. And that gives me my point F prime. Let's take a look at point G. I'm gonna count the spaces. There's one, two, three. So let me count three spaces on the other side. And that gives me my point G prime. Now, my point E is on the line, right, on the mirror line. Whenever the point is on the mirror line, when you do reflection, it stays on the same spot. Technically, 
it is zero spaces to the left. So I'm gonna move it zero spaces to the right. I connect my points and it looks like my image flipped. All right, that was, that was fun. Now for your homework, again, I'm gonna ask you for the specific point. So I'm gonna ask, I could ask you for the coordinates of F prime, E prime, G prime. If you guys can do one point, I'm pretty sure you guys can do them all. Now let's take a look at question number 46. Today I'm gonna to work up until 49. So let's take a look at number 46. I remember from algebra one, because here it says reflection across the line y equals negative x. I remember from algebra one, the line y equals negative x looked like this. Right, it was going down because it has a negative slope. You guys remember that. Now, two ways how we can do this work. I can flip everything from one side to the other side. Now, my distances are going to be diagonal. So let me, I'm going to count the distance diagonal. So I can always count the spaces from one side of the mirror line to the other line, or I can use this as a special case. I, re I go back to our notes on question number 35, right? I, I look at, uh, back on our notes, and this is a special case. It says that reflection across y equals negative x. It says that xy becomes negative y, negative x. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to use that rule. So what I'm going to do here, I don't want to count spaces. Instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the coordinates of my points. I can get the point V. My coordinates of V right now are negative 5, negative 1. I can get the coordinates of my point W. My point W is negative 2, 0. And I could get my coordinates of my point X. My point X is negative one, negative four. Okay, so now looking at the rule, it says X, Y become negative Y, negative X. So two things I'm going to do. I'm gonna flip my numbers, right? X and Y value, they get swapped. And then my signs, my sign on the Y, my sign on the X, switch. So my coordinates of V prime are going to be positive 1, positive 5. Notice how x and y switch places. And then notice how I change the signs on both. Nice. OK, so now let's take a look at w. w prime. OK, so I know they have to switch. They have to, the, the, the places are going to be swapped, the X and the Y, they're going to be swapped, but I have to change the signs to both. Now, this one, I'm going to write this as zero, positive two. Now, I'm not going to call it negative zero. There's no such thing as a negative zero. Okay, so just zero, two. And then my X prime, my coordinates of X prime are going to be positive four, positive one. Now, right, you guys see what I did? So if in your homework, I'm just going to ask you guys for the coordinates of a specific point. There you go. You guys have them. Just for fun, let me graph these. So my V prime is 1, 5. My W prime is 0, 2. And then X prime is 4, 1. Do you guys see how it looks when it flips? Pretty cool, huh? Now let's take a look at number 47. I said I'm working up into 49. We're gonna do reflection across the X axis. Now this is a special case. One thing I can do is I could look at the mirror line. If I wanna count distance, I could look at the X axis, right? This is the mirror line and count the spaces or I can treat it like a special case. According to our nodes, it says that reflection across the x-axis, xy becomes 
x negative y. So according to that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to switch the sign on the y. That's it. So I'm going to switch the sign on the y. So if it's positive, make it negative. But if it's negative, make it positive. So let me get the point to begin with, like the points that I have to begin with. My point B, my coordinates to begin with are what? Negative 2, negative 4. My point D is 0, negative 3. And my point C, I have negative 3, 0. So I, I got the coordinates that I have to begin with. According to my instructions, all I'm going to do, I'm going to switch the sign on the y value. So my b prime is going to be negative 2, positive 4. Notice I switch the sign on the 4. Again, if it's positive, make it negative. But if it's negative, make it positive. Now d prime, my coordinates are going to be 0, positive 3. Notice how I switch the sign on the, th the negative 3. And then lastly, C prime is going to be negative 3, 0. There's no such thing as a negative 0, so that's why I have to leave it as a 0. Okay, let's take a look at my last two examples for today. Questions 48 and 49. When I don't give you guys the graph, I just give you guys the coordinates, I'm going to give you a special case. You can draw this, you can get a graph, you can plot these points, and then you can count the distance if that's what you preferred, or just use the formula on our, on our notes. According to our formula, reflection across the line y equals negative x. When I look at my notes, that one says x, y, so I'm going based on the formula, x, y becomes negative y, negative x. Okay, so that tells me I'm just going to switch places, the x and the y, and I'm going to change the signs on both. So I have the coordinates. If, I'm, if I want v prime, my coordinates are going to be 2, 2. So I switched the signs on both, and then they swapped. It's the same value, so it doesn't look like it swapped, but it did. My w prime, there's no such thing as a negative 0. So, so I have to switch the signs, but again, there's no such thing as a negative 0. And then the x and the y switch places. So my value here will be 0, 3. My x prime should be 1, 1. What do you get for y prime? Nice. I'm going to call this 4, negative 2. So change the signs on both and switch. Cool. Lastly, let's take a look at number 49. This is a special case. I said that when I give you the coordinates, I will make sure that I use special cases only. It says reflection across the x-axis. According to our notes, reflection across the x-axis says that x, y becomes x, negative y. So all I have to do is switch the sign on the y value. So my v prime is 1, 1. Notice I switch the sign on the y value. My w prime is 2, negative 2. And I switch the sign on the y value. My x prime is 4, negative 1. Again, switch the sign on the y value. Not doing anything to my x value. Now, what do you get for y prime? I got 5, 4 as well. Just switch the sign on the y value. 